everybody, today I have another vlog for you. This one will be a mix of a bunch of different things, I suppose. A lot of pictures that I'll probably voice over, but I'll throw some videos in there as well. I do have a brand new place that uh, has like used lighting and that kind of stuff, like the used building material places that I've been to, but it was recommended to me um, by somebody, so there'll definitely be pictures of that. I found pictures were the easiest way to capture that place than doing a video plus then you can look at it a bit more without me waddling and waving the camera around anyway right now i am at the historic davenport hotel in spokane washington for a business trip and um it's just a really neat hotel i'll have a video of the room itself before i messed it up uh sleeping in it and all that kind of stuff but we'll definitely take a quick look at it here since, well, I'm at it before we uh, catch a flight back home. But here is the bath area where we have the sink. And of course, we have the tub and the shower and the toilet. Of course, you have to appreciate the preheat lighting. Beautiful. 13 watt PL bulbs, closet with a little fluorescent in there, more preheat, and here's the main room, very nice place, and here's a look outside, I'm on the 6th floor, I believe there's 14 floors here at this place, the one thing that I do really like about this city, they have a great park, and I really like these lights. I've been trying to get some close-up shots of them. Um, last night, only, uh, where's my finger? That one was lit, the other one was burned out. It kind of looked like mercury vapor, but I'm pretty sure it's metal halide. It's probably just going bad or something. But that's outside my hotel window. And again, the room itself. So, I suppose, we can go ahead and take a look at some of the pictures that I've taken and uh, take a look at those restore type places. So here's the second use building material place and they had this box of a variety of different bulbs this time. So there's a 1000 watt metal halide, here's another metal halide, there's a mercury vapor one there towards the bottom of the screen, it's a Philips. And we have some other metal halides mixed in, incandescent, fluorescent, halogen, a wide variety of bulbs within this box. So let's go ahead and sort through some of them here. The things that I did decide to get out of this box were the PL bulbs and uh, the fluorescent uh, 6 watt Sylvania tube. I did pick up one of these 300 watt. Uh, GE bulbs. There was another package in there for one of them, but the bulb itself was missing. So there's the one in the corner that I decided to pick up. But it was a wide variety. I was pretty surprised. Uh, I suppose it just depends on what gets donated. But all the bulbs were 25 cents a piece, I believe. And uh, that's not a bad deal, uh, obviously. So, that's why I decided to pick up the ones that I did. Of course, I could have picked up that 1000 watt metal halide bulb for a quarter, but I just don't have a use for it or a place to put it, so it's not really of any um, help to me to have uh, such a big bulb around when I can't use it. Here we are at a restore, and this box caught my eye, so let's go ahead and see what's inside. There's the shipping label to see where it went. And we'll open it up, and as you can tell, it's a NEMA head. So it's nothing too special, it's just a 100 watt high pressure sodium NEMA head. It's made by Hubble, I've never really seen a NEMA made by Hubble before, and I've never really seen one with such a short arm. So, I took a look at the instructions here to see who it was made by, and obviously like I said, it's made by Hubble. But, never really seen one of their NEMA heads in person. It looks like it can accommodate a whole bunch of different sizes for the uh, mounting arm there. So there you can see the ballast and the information label on the inside there as well. If you want to read it, just go ahead and pause it. I didn't really uh, stay there for too long. Um, we got the photo cell here in the corner. Now it didn't have a bulb in the box. I don't know if somebody took the bulb out or if it just didn't come with a bulb. 
but I decided not to pick it up as it takes up space and I don't have a lot of that really. On the opposite side we can find some other fixtures. Here is a 100 or 150 watt high pressure sodium wall pack. I don't remember exactly but I do remember opening it up because I was curious on what type of bulb was inside. But next to it, as I'll show here in a second, is a Regent 70 watt high pressure sodium floodlight. And I did decide to pick this up because I've always liked the design of this type of fixture. They did make a 80 watt mercury vapor option, but this one is the high pressure sodium option. Here is yet another restore with their uh, thing of light bulbs. And I think at this particular location, they raised the prices on some of their things because they found some more PL adapters, as you can see right here, but they want $6 a piece for them, and that's way too much for what I care to pay. I just picked up all of them the last time I was here for really cheap. So if they ever go down in price, I probably will pick them up again. But uh, definitely not at $6 a piece. That is absolutely ridiculous. And we'll take a quick browse at their light fixtures and some cords right here. And the third restore, here we have a ton of light bulbs. This one always has a huge selection of light bulbs. I'm not sure if a company donates them or where they come from, but there's always a huge selection. And I love looking through them because you can find some pretty nice ones for really cheap. They Everything's basically 50 cents a piece unless it's otherwise marked, which is usually the LED bulbs that they know are fancy but it's just all over the place with the light bulbs. There's some nice black enders up there. That's pretty cool to find, but don't have a fixture for them. I believe those were there a while back too, um, but they're still here. And uh, light bulbs upon light bulbs. Yeah, bulbs. Yeah. So this is a brand new place that I haven't been to before, but was actually recommended to me by a fellow lighting collector in the area. So. Here it is. It's a pretty neat place. It's just like the Second Use and Earthwise locations, but of course a different place with a different name. So here is their lighting section. As you can tell here in this picture, we have some wall sconces, floor lamps, shades, a whole bunch of different stuff. And here's some of their ceiling fixtures. You can see there in the back some like outdoor floodlight looking things. That's pretty interesting. One of them with a CFL flood bulb falling out it looks like. And we have some very nice old um, hanging incandescent sockets there, well dangling in the middle of the picture on the handrail, and different odds and ends for parts. Here's some shades at the bottom of one of the um, racks I guess you could say, and more in between, more fixtures than just shades. And here's some more fixtures. I'm just going to keep saying that because that's pretty much what it is. Globes and different bases for the globes. Here's some outdoor wall fixtures. Pretty neat stuff. I did enjoy looking around here at all the different things that they had. Here's a whole bunch of different shades and they had bulbs underneath them to uh, give the example but the camera just messed all of that up. And here's some more outdoorsy type fixtures. That's definitely um, what I looked at a bit more while I was in that section. And down below here is a high pressure sodium, I'd say parking garage light. Obviously they wanted a pretty penny for it. I have no use for it, so there it sits. So this is what I decided to pick up. And as you can tell it's a lot of fluorescent stuff and some incandescent and halogen right here. But um, I did decide to finally pick up this uh, F14 fluorescent fixture here. I put a GE cool white tube in it, which I got at um, a different restore. So there's two warm white ones, which aren't GE. And then I got two, two cool white ones, if I can talk today. This one had a sleeve, but it wasn't in good condition, so I just got rid of it but uh, at least I'll have some different color temperatures to play with for this fixture. So I'm looking forward to hopefully restoring this, getting some things to get rid of the paint and shine it back up again, because it is a pretty neat fixture. I believe it was used back in the day as like a, a vanity fixture next to a mirror or something like that. So that'll be a cool little project. Of course, those bulbs. And this is a Lights of America 9 watt PL preheat fluorescent wall light. Um, I was really interested by it, not only because it was three dollars, 
but it's actually magnetically ballasted. Usually Lights of America, when they were making these particular fixtures, always used some type of an electronic ballast, even though they still were using the two-pin style preheat bulbs instead. So it does have a magnetic ballast, which is clipped in right behind there, and it's a very simple construction. So there'll definitely be a video of this coming. Um, I really do like anything that's preheat and PL related, so definitely had to pick that up. And these bulbs here all came out of that 25 cent box uh, that I showed. I didn't pick up any of the metal halide stuff because I don't really have anywhere to put it. The best deal there was the 1000 watt metal halide bulb. That's pretty cool, but I don't have any place to put that thing or a ballast to even use it where I am now. And I have two Sylvania ones just like that back home anyway. But as you can tell here, I picked up some of these Home Depot commercial electric bulbs. They are two pin preheat, pretty standard stuff. We can see somebody had them sitting around for a while. 2006 is copyright date on the back here. I don't know if the Home Depot still uses this commercial electric name or not, but um, definitely not bad for 25 cents a piece. The main reason that I picked these up is because all the ones that I have uh, that are quad tube like this are the uh, cool white version. So these are warm white, which will be great for other applications. And here's some standard twin tube ones. Somebody wrote on, must have been for their front door light. And uh, just some standard stuff, uh, warm white. Here is a nice, uh, slightly older design package anyway. Sylvania F6T5. Wow, camera doesn't want to focus on anything because it keeps focusing on the background instead. There we go, made in Mexico. But pretty neat, I don't have a fixture for it, but I thought for a quarter, if I do find a fixture, I'll at least have a bulb for it. And uh, as you saw in the video, there was two of these packages, but I could only find one of the 300 watt bulbs. So I did decide to pick one up. It's a very nice older one, 120 volt, not 130. And uh, in case I need something really bright, there we go. And I was debating on picking this up, but I thought for a quarter, why not? I remember these halogen bulbs when they were a really popular thing. I have a 60 watt version of this same style of bulb. I think there's a video of it somewhere on my channel, but this is a 45 watt version and it doesn't have the ceramic neck like the 60 watt version. I'm assuming because it doesn't produce as much heat as the 60 watt version. But it still has a little chart on the back that I remember very well. Let's see. I don't really see any dates on here but uh, definitely remember that packaging. So that's what I decided to pick up. Definitely videos of these things coming in the future. Looking forward to working on that, of course. Hello everybody, so this is a cool light I just wanted to make a video of here in a stairwell. Um, the reason it's cool is because it is a preheat 13 watt PL light, um, kind of like a can light, but it's mounted on the wall. Pretty neat, it's just at the top of the stairway here. But I just love the simple design of it. With the ballast inside and this Philips, I'd say 1400K bulb in there. It seems to always be pointed at this angle every time that I'm here. Although I'm sure it's made to be pointed directly up or directly down. I wonder if it was a conversion kit, because the main part right here is missing. So it could have been converted, but it's overall very cool. I like it.
412. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your carry-on items stowed until the aircraft is parked at the gate and the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign. Use caution when opening the overhead bin to prevent entry from items that may have shifted during flight. You can now use your mobile devices. Before you leave the aircraft, be sure to check your seatbelt pocket, the overhead bins, and the floor area around your seat for any personal items you have brought on board. We invite you to visit Delta.com for all your future travel needs, including checking in for a flight and managing your Sky Miles account. On the behalf of Delta Sky 2, Delta Connection, our global partners, and especially the Seattle Base crew, thank you again for sharing your journey with us. We enjoyed having you on board and look forward to serving you again soon. Have a wonderful day. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy making these vlogs for all of you. Maybe the pictures worked out better. Let me know in the comments down below if that was okay or if you'd rather have, you know, video clips instead. I don't know, just something to experiment and try. Once again, I really do hope you enjoyed this video and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.